welcome to the introduction to the IB Career Related Programme. Throughout this video, we will go through the expectations for students, as well as the core programme details and all of the support that we offer at CIS. The first thing that I would like to draw your attention to is our school calendar. Our school calendar can be found on our website and will be published and updated regularly with all of the information about school dates and events at CIS. On the calendar you will be able to find information such as term dates, assessment dates and also the exam schedule when it comes to the summer term. All of this information will also be passed out through our parent bulletin every week by our principal Katrina Brown. Attendance is very important to us at CIS. Students are required to be in the school building throughout the school day, with some exceptions that I will go through later. Emails or calls are made to parents or carers on a daily basis if lessons are missed, to make sure that students are safe. If a student has a genuine reason for absence, parents or carers must inform the attendance officer between 8.30 and 10am by email to the email on screen, attendance at chesterinternational.co.uk or by telephone for each day of absence. Our telephone number is 01244 735 610, but it's also listed on the top of our website. Non-emergency dental or doctor's appointments and also driving lessons should not be arranged during the school day where possible. Research shows that attendance below 85% equates to a drop in achievement of at least one grade. So it's really important that students are on time and in the building. We also really value our dress code. Clothing for Chester International School should be smart, decent and reflect clothing that will be expected in a work environment. Students should think, would I wear this to work in a smart office environment? We don't have a uniform but we do have expectations. The following items are not allowed. Non-school style hoodies, jeans or jean style trousers unless they are black, leggings, trainers, tennis or other sports shoes, tank tops or strappy tops. Students are permitted to wear hoodies if they're the school hoodies which can be ordered on the uniformity website. Out of respect for our environment, we also have expectations about food and drink in the building. Students may only eat in the student common room, second floor co-working space, and in the dining room. Eating and drinking in the following areas is completely prohibited. The lecture room, creative suite, art room, boardrooms, reception and also the science labs. This is to ensure that our building stays clean and tidy throughout the day. Students will generally be permitted to consume a light healthy snack such as a piece of fruit during a lesson. Students should not plan to eat during lessons though. And if a student has a lesson in one of the above listed rooms, eating is completely forbidden. There is no chewing gum allowed at CIS and this is also to keep our building nice and clean. Sixth form pupils may leave site at lunch times in order to purchase food. Hot food shouldn't be brought on site though. Sixth form pupils may go home for the day following afternoon registration if they have no more lessons on that day. This is an additional measure to ensure social distancing guidelines are followed. Students should make sure that they get their afternoon registration mark before going home for the day though. This is to help us make sure that students are safe during the day. We also have expectations about self-study at school. Students are timetabled into several self-scheduled study periods. Self-scheduled lessons are time where students can be with a teacher but completing work that they have decided they need to work on. This is an extra level of support that we offer at CIS. We do not set homework, but we do have high expectations for work completed outside of the classroom. Self-scheduled work may be set by teachers, and this can be completed if students want to do extra work in a certain subject in order to challenge themselves, or maybe they need to improve in a certain subject. This work will be published on Canvas for students to access at any time they wish. It is a safeguarding requirement for all students to visibly wear their student ID lanyard. All students will be issued with their own student ID lanyard and will be responsible for its safekeeping. These are generally printed at the start of the school year. 
Replacement ID will incur a charge of £5, so it's important that students keep these safe. Wellbeing is also really important to us at CIF. We have lots of things on offer to help students' wellbeing. The first thing that we have on offer is student coaching. Our coaches are called Sarah, Vicky and Natalie. Students can meet with their coach when needed to discuss any issues that they may have, whether these be personal, academic or to do with anything else in their life. School is not just about academic performance. It's also about ensuring that students are ready for the world ahead and this means that looking after their mental health and personal well-being is really important. On a Friday morning during team meet, students will take part in scheduled well-being activities. We also have electives. On a Tuesday afternoon, students will take part in a sport activity. This means that students are able to come in their own clothes on a Tuesday in order to prepare them for the sport activity. Students choose which activity they want to take part in because it's important that they enjoy this time. Students also take part in a creative elective on a Thursday. Academic mentoring at CIS is another big part of our school. Students will meet with their academic mentors a minimum of once per half term. Students will see their academic mentors every day during team week. Meeting with an academic mentor is an opportunity to reflect on progress. It's also an opportunity for goal setting and helping to make sure that students are on track to achieve their potential. Academic mentors will also help students with planning for their future. For instance, sixth form tutors will help students with university applications and also writing their references. At CIS, we also have transdisciplinary learning. Transdisciplinary learning is learning that transcends subject barriers. In the real world, learning doesn't take place within subject silos, and so it shouldn't at school either. At CIS, we are implementing a number of themes throughout the year. The first theme is awareness and students experience a day dedicated to this. During the awareness theme day, students explored the idea of self-awareness and will continue this project throughout the next half term. Now let's have a look at some of the elements of the programme. The IB Career Related Programme is made up of career related studies and also diploma programme courses. At CIS, we offer CTEC Media as our primary vocational study. Students also select two to three diploma programme courses. Students also take part in the IB CP core, which is made up of four elements, the reflective project, language development, personal and professional skills and service learning. Personal and professional skills is a non-assessed element. This is based on weekly sessions and is a skills-based course designed to prepare students for the workplace. The reflective project is internally assessed. It might be a 3000 word essay or can also be a range of other formats including a video, photograph essay or interview. Throughout the two year process, students will complete a number of reflections ending with the Viva. The student's first full draft is due in December of year 13 and the final completed project is due in December of year 13. Also in December of year 13, we will host a celebration event which is called a Viva, where all parents and friends will be invited to celebrate with us the completion of this big project. Service learning is internally assessed. This is a programme where students give back to the community and take part in extracurricular activities. Students will have weekly sessions to work on their reflections and will complete an e-portfolio. There will be three interviews throughout the two-year process to make sure that students are on track to pass. The last element of the IBCP core is language development. This is also internally assessed and students will complete an e-portfolio of language projects. There are several elements to assessment and reporting at CIS for Year 12 students. Firstly, teachers will provide regular feedback via Canvas. 
This is accessible to parents and I'll tell you a little bit more about accessing Canvas in a minute. We also have half-termly assessments. The dates for these will be communicated via the weekly parent bulletin, but dates are also available on Canvas for each individual subject. These dates will also be published on the school calendar on our website. In December, students in Year 12 complete their winter assessments. These are the first big exam papers that students will have. There will be a report in January to communicate progress based on these exams and it's a good opportunity to see how students are achieving in the DP as a whole. In June, students will complete their big summer assessments. This will follow with an end of year report in July. The winter and summer assessments are more like mock exams, whereas the half-termly assessments may not be a full pass paper. Parents and guardians have access to Canvas, our online learning platform. You can observe students' accounts on Canvas to access teacher feedback as an ongoing process of feedback, rather than waiting for one end of year report. We find it's really beneficial to be open about progress. You can also access students' grades in this way. To sign up for a parent account on Canvas, you need to go to our Canvas website, which is at cis.instructure.com. The link for this is also on our website. Once you're on Canvas, if you click on Parent of a Canvas user, click here for an account, it will take you to this form. All you need to do is fill in some details, your name, email address and create a password for yourself and then enter the student pairing code. Students can generate their own pairing code. On their student account, they should click on account and then settings. Here, there is an option to pair with an observer, which will generate a pairing account code. This can be typed into this box here. Then you need to agree to the terms and conditions and you can start participating as a parent user on Canvas. As a parent user on Canvas, you'll also get access to our Team Meet course, where announcements are published daily for students. Each Diploma Programme subject has an internal assessment as well as the external examinations. The internal assessment calendar for Year 12 is already published and available on the Team Meet course. Alongside the internal assessment dates, there is also other useful information and this can be found in the parent guide in the Team Meet course on Canvas. The grading for IBDP subjects is a little bit unfamiliar perhaps to students in the UK. Grading for IBDP subjects is graded 7 to 1, with 1 being the lowest and 7 being the highest. Elements of the IB core, including the extended essay and theory of knowledge, are graded A to E, with A being the highest and E being the lowest. The OCR CTEC media elements of the course are graded Pass, Merit, Distinction or Distinction Star, with Distinction Star being the highest. These grades are used for both internally assessed coursework components and also external exams. Here are some important dates for Term 1 that students should know about. On the 17th of September, we will have a visit from a Laterna Education Guest Lecture for Year 12. This will be all about motivation and how to start off best in the IBDP. On the 30th of November, students' extended essay research proposals are due. And on the 30th of December is our first assessment week for Year 12. There are also some important documents. The Digital Parent Guide is on Team Meet on Canvas with information all about the courses and also the internal assessment dates. The IB General Regulations document talks all about the course and also our Academic Honesty Policy and Code of Honour talks about expectations for students at CIS. If you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Our Principal, Katrina Brown, or the IB coordinator, Abby Pears. And lastly, here's the attendance email again. There's a contact request form also if you have any questions about any elements of the IB Diploma Programme or any of our processes at CIS. <laughs>